Well, good morning, television neighbors. Today, I thought I was going to talk a little bit about um, Cortana again, and but more widely the topic of personal digital assistance. Um, I'm really excited about the developments here, and I use them all the time, but it still like blows me away that more and more people aren't um, bringing them into their lives, and, and I just... I mean, I've, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that uh, she can do for you. And uh, I say she, there's been a little bit of discussion about whether or not to um, personify them. I mean, the whole point is that uh, ideally they're supposed to seem like a person to you uh, in the way that they interact. You know, they're not supposed to, if you say something to them, they're not supposed to say, error, 500. You know, they're supposed to say, Oh, something wasn't working quite, quite right. I'm gonna see if I can fix it or something like that. You know, you want everything to be much more personable. And, you know, a lot of people that I encounter, they're, you know, they're technical people. And I, I don't really understand the fascination with, like, technical people like myself should also enjoy a personable experience. You know, it just because I'm capable of understanding error codes and researching them and digging through logs and debugging the actual code, assuming I had it, that doesn't mean that is a wise expenditure of my time. And humans are conversational people, so it makes sense that we should be able to interact with computers in the same way that, the inter that we interact with the other humans around us and that we get, you know, some kind of, uh, reasonable response so you know as computers evolve they should they really should be more and more personable and um, once again this kind of goes back you want know, my fascination for it kind of goes back to the movie 2001 a space odyssey where um, you know they had Hal that was a computer that um, ended up running amok because it refused to open uh, like it it ran amok because it was lied to and it didn't know how to handle that in its coding and so it its instructions were to protect the lie over protecting um life and so it just you know started killing people to protect itself so well to protect the information it was told to protect so um it's a it's a lot of people they kind of discuss it as a um, as an example of like machines run amok, but it was really ultimately a story of human fallibility because the humans gave the computer screwed up instructions in the first place that it didn't know how to handle and then the computer, you know, did the best that it could with the information it had and um, You know, that's where the problem started. So Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a while before your computer is going to um, try to kill you to protect secrets, but uh, like on its own. But I mean, there's the opportunity for mistakes. It's just that there, are f the mistakes seem to be of lesser magnitude. I mean, like look at personal assistants and stuff. Let's say you're using like Google Home or something. Um, Google Home could conceivably you know, lock you out of your house via your primary means of entering or something, but you can still use a key to override it, and, uh, you know, she could refuse, or it could refuse to open, you know, the garage door for you, or it could turn on, um, you know, the, the heat really warm while you're in the house, but, you know, most furnaces, they're not space station life support systems, so, you know, if it turns off, you'll just wake up because you're cold and go override it and turn it on. So, I mean, I don't really think we're at a point where it matters all that much. And uh, the thing that, the reason that I'm so into using the assistance over people is it's all a trade-off. So, you know, when people talk about using automated systems to replace people in these things, they typically seem to assume um, human infallibility which is not my experience. I mean, when I go and schedule appointments with people, you know, sometimes they forget. Um, sometimes they, you know, 
I don't know, they don't get, they don't respond or whatever. I mean, the reason that these things take a lot of time is because the people are not like computers in the sense that in a computer you ask them a question, they process the information super fast and you usually find out whether or not your activity passed or failed um, right away. Whereas with humans, they can get distracted, they can forget to answer the question, they can lollygag, they can procrastinate, there are all these things that can get in the way. So when you hand off these human interaction tasks to computers that are designed to handle them in ways that are pleasant for humans, um, you can actually save a ton of time and energy um, that would be spent doing other things. And the more that you use assistance for the things that assistance can do, the more ridiculous it seems when you encounter people who are still doing it the old way. And that's not, so it's not to say that you can't have like a scheduling mistake or something like that, but the, you know, you could have a scheduling mistake anyway, and it's just a scheduling mistake. I mean, it's usually not a super big deal. So one thing I would like to do is, um, I'd like to gradually move to, um, like anytime I, ha I need like my annual physical or whatever, you know, I want to schedule that via, you know, one of these digital assistants instead of scheduling it. Um, you know, they, all, they, they like to have you get your, your planner out or your calendar and then stand there and then they throw a date at you. How's this? And you know, they have like hundreds of available dates and everything. I mean, it depends on how far you want to wait. But, uh, so they have all these dates and then they're like, well, how's August 27th at 2.30 p.m.? And you just go and look at your calendar and it's empty because you don't plan out that far and you're like, sounds good. But then rescheduling is a hassle and, and all this kind of stuff. So I, I just think that uh, in the long run, you're more likely to have better scheduling by using automated assistance because while the features aren't quite there, um, you might, in the future, it might notice uh, that, the, let's say you're going to your annual physical or your, you know, semi-annual dentist appointment or whatever, and you originally had it planned for a time when you're, you know, you're going to have to take a half day off work or something like that. But what if your assistant notices that the dental appointment had an opening that you weren't aware of? and it fits into your schedule better, you know, because the assistant's job is to know your schedule really well. Um, but then also be checking in the background with the other assistants that you have appointments with. So that, you know, so in the future, there's the power, like right now it's still kind of automated. You're like, oh, this doesn't work for me. Can you reschedule? And it just goes, sure. And you're done. It reschedules it. It's awesome. It's no hassle. But in the future, it might just suggest rescheduling in much the same way that a nav system would say, oh, there's an accident ahead. Um, why don't you take this route instead? And, you know, uh, I actually, I, I've been using Waze um, because right now I think it's the best um, driving uh, assistant on Windows Phone, uh, even though it's not very well supported after Google bought them, they kind of terminated like it still works and I don't know when the last update was but it's not getting any new features it's pretty Spartan but it still seems to work so that's good but you know so we use them you know we use nav well and I was even talking with a couple of co-workers of mine and you know once again all engineers all technical people and I had to go to some place that I didn't usually go before and so I wasn't sure what the traffic flow patterns would be like so I fired up Waze and I followed its advice. And I'm like, well, that's weird, but you know what? I'm gonna follow its advice. Well, it turned out um, the simplest route, which I had originally planned on taking, and that's why I was a little surprised when Waze suggested an alternate, because the simplest route was faster by like four minutes than any other option. Um, when Waze suggested the alternate, I, I decided to take, you know, take its advice. And when I got there, I got there before people who had left, before I did, because th there was like a huge traffic accident and they got uh, all 
you know, they got all backed up. It was a situation, it was one of these things where a semi wrecked and they were going to have to spend all night cleaning it up. But then they reopened it temporarily just for um, rush hour and everyone got to gawk at the smashed up semi and everything. So, you know, it's, there's, I think there's no shame in having computers watch out for you. Um, you know, that's really one of the things they're, they're adding as they're kind of easing people into self-driving cars is, you know, the idea is to have self-driving cars watch out for you in every respect, uh, checking your blind spots and managing your speed and finding the best route and all this kind of stuff. But uh, in the meantime, they can have it do like adaptive cruise control or just check your blind spots or maybe do parallel parking for you and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, it's clear where this is all going. Um, so with Cortana, I wanted to mention you know, one of the advantages is, especially if you're on Windows 10, which I know some people aren't, I don't think Cortana is available on Mac yet, but uh, maybe it is. I know it's available on iOS, and it's available on Windows and Android, and I think it's going to be available on Alexa soon, but maybe, maybe that's not happening still. I don't know. I'll have to check into it. But one of the things people don't realize is, you know, they kind of use Cortana as a search box and if they just want to use it as a search box, I can see how it might get in their way a little bit because it goes and tries to offer all this helpful stuff. And if you're just trying to use it as a search box, then maybe that gets in the way a little bit. But I was showing a coworker the other day that you can use Cortana to do things like set reminders and timers and stuff like that. So that's one of the main ways that I use Cortana as an assistant is I say, you know, I'll be sitting there working and I'll just remember that I need to pick up like drywall screws or something at the, at the uh, home improvement store. And so I've got Cortana on my phone, but I'll be there at my, you know, desktop at work and just in the middle of what I'm doing, I'll just go down to the Cortana box and say, hey, remind me to pick up drywall screws next time I'm near the home improvement store and it lets me pick any one of them you know any home improvement store which means that as I'm driving around it's looking to see all the businesses around me and see if they are you know are a home improvement place or a hardware store and you know it'll it'll offer you know it'll it'll fire up little alerts like hey remember to pick up drywall screws you're near this hardware store and so you can kind of decide, you know, go, no go, whether or not you want to do that. So, you know, I think that's really handy. Uh, also, I had like a bit of a stuffy nose this morning, so I took a little bit of, uh, you know, medicine for that. And it's like you, you take it every four hours or you reassess and see if you need it. So I took some of that and then I just used the command I said hey um, remind me to take more medicine in four hours and you know she just does all the math for me and I said it to my phone at home you know while standing in the bathroom but when I, I like it'll pop up at work on my desktop like while I'm working it'll say oh by the way it's time for you to take some more medicine or see if you need it um, you can it, there there are all kinds of skills that people have added to their apps that allow deeper integration. So, for example, um, if you're tracking your caloric intake, you can say um, to you know to Cortana to have the Fitbit app um, log that you had a sandwich, you know, a, I don't know, a tomato sandwich for lunch, and it goes in there and it finds tomato sandwich and it goes to today and it goes to lunch and then. I mean, it just, it's amazing how seamlessly it works and it takes so much less time than going and doing it manually, you know, by thinking to yourself like, oh, I have to go and open that app. That app is on my phone, you know, whatever. I also have been using a lot the lists feature that are built into Cortana. Right now it still only works with Wonderlist, but um, hopefully it'll start working with Microsoft to do soon. And, um, yeah, you can just go in there and say, hey, um, like, add such and such to the grocery list. And the grocery list can be shared among two people. So anyone at any Cortana device 
in the household can just add an item to the grocery list and it's added. Another thing that uh, amazes me is, I mean, one of the things that's nice is you can type this stuff as well. So like my coworker, he set a timer by just typing, hey, you know, or he didn't even have to type. He just typed in the Cortana box, set a reminder for this time or set an alarm for this time. But, um, you know, it works with voice commands as well, and it works in incredibly noisy environments. I mean, the other evening I needed to set a reminder for something, and my son was, you know, upset about something, so he was, you know, yelling and, like, he was kind of whining. He was like, hey, you know, I need this. And so I was on my way to get it, but he didn't have it yet, so he was still a little irritated about it. And, um, this is for Spence right here. Oh, and the bus was honking at that person. So, uh, yeah, anyway, the, um, he was yelling and it was really loud. But the thing is that, like, Cortana was able to pick out my voice. I wasn't yelling over it or anything. I was just like right up in the speaker, like giving it the instructions and she just picked up on it right away. Uh, I also did it again. I was at a loud bowling alley. There was a lot of you know, music and conversation and It was uh, taken care of really well. I mean, I, I I think I've mentioned it before in some of my vlogs. One of my, you know, I brought it up to some techies at a at a geek dinner, and you know they were like, "Oh, I just use Alexa, or you know, not Alexa, because that's mostly used with uh, Amazon's home-based device." But uh, yeah, I just use Siri or whatever, and, and he was like giving Siri commands in this loud bar, and Siri wasn't understanding them, and then Cortana was, so, um, could have been a fluke, but, and, and Siri could be better by now, but I just thought it was really interesting, you know, when you're, when you're trying to show someone something works, it always sucks when it falls flat on its face, and, uh, Cortana just continues to impress. So I'd really recommend like digging in and looking at all the things, all the skills that she has. Um, if you go, they're, they're changing the UI a little bit depending on which version of Windows 10 you have. Um, they, they're always just making slight improvements and changes to it. But um, if you go in there and look at, um, like click Cortana on your desktop, and then go in there, there's like a journal or a notebook, and you can go and click in there and look at the skills, and you can see, uh, you can also um, ask Cortana, just say, what can I say? And she will tell you, you know, she'll show you a whole bunch of things and give you a lot of ideas for things that you can say. So I would just encourage you to like, just make a mental note or even an actual note. Like if you're a post-it style person, you know, write down like three things that you would that you think would be helpful to master um, with Cortana and then just start using it more. I mean I even use Cortana when we're at the playground. It's getting to the time of year where we're probably going to be spending a lot of more time at playgrounds. And uh, I just use Cortana to say, you know, hey kids, it's uh, we have to leave and head home in five minutes and then I'll set an alarm for five minutes with Cortana. And then when Cortana's alarm starts going off, the kids are like, oh, yep, it's been five minutes, it's time to go. Cortana says it's time to go, and you know, she's she doesn't lie, she's a good timekeeper. So that's all that's handy. Um, I also use it for my kids for wish lists. So if they my kids don't really throw tantrums in the store if they want to buy something. Um, at least yet. I mean, I'm sure it's a phase that they might go through, but um, you know, my daughter's six and my son is two. And anytime they say they want something in a store, I just go and add it to their wish list. And I can do that with Cortana. And like, I can just say, hey, add this to so and so's wish list. 
and boom, you just get immediate feedback. It's been added and it just saves so much time. So then, I mean, so it's about kind of uh, harvesting information as you go through and also not deferring things. So um, I really, I like you, I really like the inbox zero method, even though I'm actually really kind of not using the inbox zero method because my, my emails, like it's not my preferred or favorable way of communication. It's just kind of a way that if people want to float something by me in a sea of spam, then they can send it that way or they can send it via IM, like a Skype message or something like that. So I think most people know that that's the best way to get a hold of me. But um, yeah, it's just really interesting because you can go and um, you know just kind of harvest all this information as you're going through life and uh, you can even set it in motion. Like um, I, there are a couple of lunch appointments and stuff that I'd like to set up with various people. So I'm gonna take like three minutes when I get down at my desk and I'm just gonna unleash Cortana on them and find a good time. And first of all, just make sure my calendar's updated so I have any conflicts noted. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really interesting and helpful um, to be able to do that because you know, it's work that you don't have to do. It's mental effort you don't have to expend. You don't have to remember, you know, to, like a lot of times I'll set reminders um, to jog my memory about something. Like uh, if I need to go to the grocery store, I'll say, hey, set a reminder to uh, go to the grocery store at 4.30. And then I get that alert before I'm done working for the day but then like I'm, I'm reminding myself while I'm at a place where I'm likely to be in front of my computer and see the alert and everything, I'm reminding myself like, hey, check what you're doing tonight. So um, that's really uh, uh, handy and helpful. And I would just, I mean, I just get so much use out of it. I, I could not imagine living without it. And so it just blows my mind that people aren't using it like hundreds of times a day like I am because I mean, yeah, it's, it's nothing magical. It, you know, a lot of these things are just simple reminders or adding things to your calendar or whatever. But um, just having the habit of doing it in the moment um, just really helps in so many ways. So anyway, um, just wanted to encourage you guys to dig into that more. Um, I like Cortana over some of the alternatives because once again, it's on all these devices. So um, if you, you know, there's a real benefit to having it everywhere you are. And I just, uh, you know, I can't understate that, or I can't overstate that enough. Um, have it everywhere that you are, and then you'll be able to use it anywhere you want to use it. And it'll be able to remind you anywhere you are. And then also start getting into like, look at, uh, there's like a section in Cortana's settings where it shows all of the secondary apps that she works with and if you have I mean if you have them on your machine so if you have them on your machine presumably you use them so it might be something worthwhile uh, to dig into uh, you know just to save yourself time and effort and it could be a case where you end up using the app more because you realize that it's something that that you can do um, there there was a kind of famous gaff um, when Cortana was first announced one of her first skills outside of Cortana itself was uh, the ability to send a tweet. And so um, Joe Bellafiore, I believe from Microsoft, he was like the product manager on that. And he got up at a big tech conference and he said uh, to do something. And he, he said, um, Cortana tweet for me. And it, you know, tweet uh, something, something. And then he's like, hashtag awesome. And the actual tweet that went out went out with a hashtag that was Cortana cash have awesome and uh, so it was kind of funny they actually printed t-shirts I actually have a, a t-shirt that has the Cortana logo on the front and then it has um, Cortana cash have awesome as a hashtag on the back so I, that's you know you got to watch out what it's doing but most of the time it's easy to correct so I wouldn't worry about making little mistakes. I think, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, 
you're just gonna have so much time savings and so much burden lifted by making all these reminders and kind of getting in a flow uh, and it really is kind of like having um, you know a, a real personal assistant to hand it to you I mean uh, one one of my little mental triggers for like when I should use it is if I interact with someone else and then they hand me off to an assistant then I'm gonna hand them off to my assistant that's kind of a rule it's like if you want you can interact directly with me and I'll do that but the second you hand me off to a third party I'm doing the same to you and I think that's gonna be a better world in the long run because a lot of times when I get handed off to these people they I mean it's their whole job to do scheduling with people and they seem horrible at it like I don't understand how people can like you know I'm pretty horrible at scheduling I think I'll go and become a receptionist and I'll be surly at people and you know I'll glare at them if they pull out their cell phone okay I'll I'll show you I'll give you something to glare about you know <laughs> you technophobe here you talk to my robot see ya and <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I'm, they always try to get you to schedule right when you're in their office and stuff. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to say, you know what, my schedule's really busy, so I'll have, my, um, I'll have my assistant contact you. Which I can even do from the waiting room. So, um, I can, yeah, that's a good thing. Th that's a really funny thing, too, that um, I was talking with my, uh, with my wife about something one time. We needed some kind of permission form or whatever and I'm like why don't you just email them she's like well they don't have email I'm like what do you mean they don't have email like emails free like they could go get a gmail account or they could get a hotmail account or proton mail or tutanota if they want secure email which is what I'd want for like a doctor's office or whatever what do you mean they don't have email like that's just not if they don't have email then they're choosing to be unhelpful and unfriendly and inaccessible in an I mean email is as old as I am so they don't have email they don't have my business then so anyway I reached out to them I'm like yeah um do you have email do you have an email address and then they just gave it to me right away they have email and so uh, and that's another beef of mine is uh, when you go on a website I think Every website needs feedback on this and they need to be called out on it. So please, if you see this, do it every time. It will help me and I'm already doing it for you. If it says, send us an email and then you click a link and it sends you to a little tiny postage stamp um, size text area with like 15 fields that they want filled out on you every time. And, and half of them are drop down boxes, you know, with that are not your option. It's just a whole bunch of bullshit. Whereas if, it, if they really just had a link to an email address, then you could just email them. So um, I realized that on their end, it arrives as an email from the web server or something, but that's not, I mean, click here for a contact form. That's fine. It lets you know what you're getting into. But uh, yeah, email, even though I don't use email as a, like a first string communication method, I do use email as kind of a background communication protocol with, you know, old fashioned people who don't have IM. And I think more and more often, this stuff is gonna rely less on email and more on APIs and that kind of stuff. So they're gonna, that's application program interface for those of you, for those of you who are less technical. But um, essentially you're going to be, um, you're gonna have like, Cortana, rather like if let's say I need a an appointment at the AT&T store or whatever, then Cortana won't actually have to talk with someone working at the AT&T store. They'll just go into the API for scheduling and say what kind of appointment I need and then see what's available and we'll never actually talk to a human. So the more we demand this kind of stuff uh, in terms of generating workload with digital assistants, um, for example, if I had a Cortana skill that would be like, hey, um, contact my local mom and pop train shop and ask them if they have this product in stock, then she's going to go and you know fire off some emails and say, hey, I was wondering if you had these products in stock. Well, right now they have to do it all via email. And if everyone's doing that with digital assistance, every time they have a question about a product price or whatever, especially if they're doing it to like 
50 or 100 train shops all at the same time because they're doing comparative shopping, um, they're quickly going to get inundated with emails and or Facebook messages or whatever. And the, the bots are able to communicate via any one of these methods. So it's going to make sense for them to take their store inventory and prices and stuff like that and put it into an API so that any retailer will, you know, just like uh, a lot of websites, they have like a help section or a fact section, then pretty much anyone who has a retail site, you'd be able to get this plugin and you would say like pricing or whatever, or orders. And then people can, you know, these other APIs can, you know, they, so a mom and pop shop, they're not gonna all have their own API. They're gonna deal with like a, a standardized vendor. So there are gonna be these standards that develop um, for that kind of interface and it's gonna be really cool because you'll be able to code something like Cortana to interface with all the major standards and then anytime like you ask Cortana to check the price at the mom and pop shop then they're gonna go look and see which standard the mom and pop shop supports on their website or their or whatever and then if they don't support it then they'll go ahead and fire off the email or call but um, I really think that's where the future of bots is going, is it's actually going to facilitate greater and greater use of direct machine-to-machine machine -machine communication. So it's almost like where, what I think will happen is instead of Cortana being my personal assistant, Cortana will also be an employee at any store I do business with. So I would just have to say, hey Cortana I'd like a Whopper with cheese and a small fry and a chocolate shake and she'll be like okay you can pick that up at the nearest McDonald's which is you know here here are the instructions um, I'm showing that you're 15 minutes out so I'm gonna put your order in um, you know when you roll into the parking lot and then by the time you get to the pickup window uh, and it's prepaid, of course. So they'll put your order in. You'll just pull into the pickup window. It'll it'll be all so awesome because, you know, right now you've got this added layer. But as companies reach out to the bots, reach out to people's personal digital assistants, they'll be able to, um, you know, have fun with it and and make Cortana during those interactions into their employee as well. And even ask you things like, do you want fries with that? It's like, well, yeah, I said I wanted fries. Um, so that'll be cool. And I think you can already, with some of the apps, you can use Cortana to order pizza, but it's like, hey, Cortana, contact Domino's and order my order pizza. But like the ultimate is to just have Cortana switch her role. Um, and, and even like have Cortana like be the receptionist at your doctor's office or your doctor even um you know at least for initial questions like hey i feel sick oh uh, what are your symptoms you know do you have a fever all this kind of stuff and then just automatically submit that into your patient chart so your doctor then their assistant says hey um your patient so and so is not feeling well here's the information i was able to gather from them through our interaction um do you want them to go to the ER or do you want them to schedule an appointment or whatever? Um, this is all stuff that it doesn't really require a lot of human decision making. So it doesn't really require true intelligence and professional decision making. Um, but it's mostly just shuffling information around. And so I think it's really good to get familiar with this now and start using them now so that you're in the habit as these other things become available because they're going to completely revolutionize the way we live. All right, uh, speaking of revolutionizing the way we live, I've got to go and write code to change the world. So um, in this case, I'm working on code that will help us identify, um, that'll help us stay on top of translations. So I'm trying to get help our company go into different markets by um, implementing translations for a lot of different languages. So um, today I might be either working on some tooling to help with that or actually helping with translations. I think I'm working on Hebrew right now. So anyway, that's it for me. I'll uh, talk to you tomorrow. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you know anyone who doesn't use bots, um, maybe send this to them. Maybe they'll be compelled to try it 
Um, and of course, I've mentioned it before, so some of you longtime listeners have you know, had the bot pitch before. So um, let me know how it's been going for you. Like, what are your barriers? Have you not been doing it? Is there some obstacle to you? Um, do you not want to use Cortana? Have you been trying it with Siri? Have you been trying it with Google? Um, how's that working out for you? Um, very curious about all this stuff. So looking forward to your feedback. See you tomorrow.